Hello everyone, Impiator here, and welcome back to my newcomer's guide to Dark Souls Remastered. This is episode 18. In the last episode, we ended up finishing off Pinwheel in the Catacombs, and now we're about to head to the painted world of Ariamis, uh, which is in Anorlando. However, before we do that, we're going to go uh, grab a couple of things, uh, kind of begin some, uh, some of the cleanup as we reach kind of the second half of the game. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the female undead merchant to grab a couple of things that we're going to need for this trek. Still no humanity. Ah. My luck with that has been really bad. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and buy some things from her. Uh, first of all, I recommend having some blooming purple moss clumps. Um, you don't explicitly need them for this area, but some of the enemies that are here, if we don't attack them from a distance with arrows, then they will end up uh, giving us toxins. So we want to make sure that we have at least a couple of these on us. I would also recommend having some charcoal pine resin because the boss, Crossbreed Priscilla, is uh, susceptible to uh, fire damage. And then I'm also going to go ahead and recommend that we uh, get some fire arrows. Um, the enemies that we're going to be facing in this area that create the toxin, if you shoot them with fire arrows, they won't produce the toxin. Um, that being said, I usually just recommend killing them from, from afar anyway, so um, I'm going to go ahead and buy them, but I probably won't be actually needing them for this fight. Uh, let's see, we have 6,000 souls. I'm going to go ahead and utilize some of my soul items. And I usually like to grab around 75, should be fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and collect some more poison arrows as well. And then at this stage, I'm going to start working my way through my standard arrows and start uh, getting the large arrows, which are going to do more damage. So I'm going to go ahead and buy, I guess, up to 100 of those. Let's see, 84 will get me to 100. And cool. So that's what we're going to do for that. Uh, what we're also going to go ahead and do is we're going to go get the Blood Bite Ring from Oswald of Kareem. He's the guy who will absolve you of your sins. However, we only have 2,000 souls right now, so I'm going to go kill the Hellkite Drake in order to collect the 10,000 souls that we need for that uh, item. So if you have enough souls, you can certainly just buy the item from him if you would like. Um, otherwise, though, this is going to be one of the easier ways to get uh, 10,000 souls. It's also worth mentioning that uh, this, uh, this Hellkite Drake is really meant to be an obstacle, not so much a boss fight, so I don't really count him as a boss fight. So we're going to head to the Sunlight Altar for this. In addition, this boss can be a little glitchy because sometimes he will repeat a uh, attack over and over and over rather than letting you kill him, but I'll show you how to try to avoid that. By the way, you can come out here and talk to Solaire if you want to. Uh, you do not have to talk to him, but he does uh, suggest where he's likely to head next. So we're going to be meeting him in uh, kind of the Demon Ruins, Lost Isolith areas. So as you approach kind of the middle of the bridge, uh, the Drake's going to toast the bridge as is usual. And I'm going to recommend that we equip the Dragon Crest Shield for this, just in case we need to block his fire. 
and then I'm ready to nail him with an arrow and then run towards him. So I recommend two-handing for this so we can get as many hits in him as possible. You know, he usually will toast the bridge. If you're lucky, you can kill him before he has the chance to fly up into the air and uh, start repeating his attack. So a lot of times what will happen is he will jump up into the air and uh, basically toast the bridge uh, via a diagonal hit, and that does a lot of damage. Then he'll land, then he'll do it again, then he'll land, then he'll do it again. He's basically caught in a loop for whatever reason. So if that happens to you, um, try to get behind him. And once you get far enough behind him, he will then turn around and stop doing that repeated attack. So hopefully you don't run into that. You shouldn't have enough uh, stamina and damage at this point to be able to nail him before he does that. But if not, uh, you can do that. Otherwise, though, we're going to go ahead and uh, warp to the Undead Parish now because we're going to go ahead to where we originally fought the Bell Tower Gargoyles. Because we're going to meet Oswald there in order to buy the Bloodbite Ring. So the reason why we're going to be buying the Bloodbite Ring, by the way, is because the boss, Crossbreed Priscilla, uh, almost all of her attacks generate bleed damage. And... While I think you can definitely beat this boss without it, I do want to make the chances of you uh, not having to leave the area as good as possible. So we're going to end up getting the Blood Bite Ring from Oswald. We're also going to end up getting a shield that reduces uh, blood, um, blood Bite damage as well, or bleed damage anyway. And we'll actually get that shield whenever we go to the Painted World. And we're going to be equipping those for the boss fight. Alrighty, so here's Oswald. Uh, now be aware, if you go to Request Absolution, you're going to notice that we have got 33,000 souls right now worth of uh, sins. And that is because of uh, various things that we've done. Um, anytime you abandon a covenant uh, in order to become a member of a different covenant, you will incur sins that way. Uh, the only way to uh, not incur sins is to have him uh, basically end your relationship with the covenant himself. Otherwise, the other thing that we did was we killed Shiva, who is a member of the Forest Hunters Covenant, so uh, that's going to be something, too. I wouldn't worry too much about the sins that you have. It is going to increase the likelihood of you being invaded, however, more specifically by the uh, Dark Moon uh, folks. And uh, we'll actually become a member of the Dark Moon uh, folks in the next episode. For now, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and purchase the Blood Bite Ring from him, and we're going to go ahead and leave. So now we're going to head to Anor Orlando, more specifically the Dark Moon Tomb. Alrighty, so let's head to the Dark Moon Tomb. Or 
or pull this lever and just head upstairs once it is all the way down. So one thing I want to call out, by the way, is you do have to have at this phase the peculiar doll. Uh, this is required to uh, own in order for you to uh, access the painted world. If you don't have this, uh, we did in a few episodes ago, we ended up killing the uh, stray demon. So kill the stray demon and then uh, take the ladder behind him and then you'll find a black knight with or who, a black knight who is guarding this item. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kill all the painted guardians. And again, it's been a while since we've uh, fought these guys. Be careful, by the way, because they do like to do backstabs. If you knock down the chandelier, by the way, you'll get a sorcery in this case. These guys, by the way, do have a strong chance to drop their um, their items, namely these uh, these throwing knives. So good place to farm them if you want them. So here we got the black iron helm and gear. Next, we're going to inspect the painting. And now we are in the painted world. So be aware. Uh, we cannot leave the painted world until we finish the area. However, I will show you a way to get back fast. So uh, we'll kind of go through a portion of the area and then we'll do that. So over here, we're going to go ahead and grab the bonfire. So these guys do a little bit more damage than the last version of them that you faced. Next, pull out your bow. We're going to knock this down. And I'll go ahead and switch back to the crest shield for the rest of this area. Up here, we got a guy who's going to uh, shoot us with some arrows. More of these enemies. Okay, so these enemies, uh, one of them has the ability to uh, throw fire at you. Just shoot him until he dies. Uh, these are the ones, by the way, uh, in fact, both of them are, that if you do not kill them with fire, they will spray a bunch of uh, toxin at you when they die. So if you're far enough away, no big deal. But if you're close to them, you'll have to worry about that. Anyway, come around here. We're going to head up, kill some enemies. And then notice how there are these flying enemies that are on the roof of these buildings. Once you grab this item, you're going to be attacked by a couple of them. You can get them to kind of line up. You can more easily deal with them. I'm going to line them up. Oh, he, he moved. Oh, well. They're not that bad, but uh, they do have a pretty uh, disgusting grab attack uh, as far as its damage is concerned. So they'll basically get up on your head and, uh, and, and do a grab attack to your head. Anyway, um, right here, there's a uh, item to drop off and get. We're going to grab twin humanities. We're going to drop down here. So we have an enemy to kill. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head downstairs. So we got some more rats to deal with. Like the normal rats, they can uh, drop humanity. 
Got a soul item. And we're going to head back up. So if there are any items out here, go ahead and grab them. This is a soul item. And then we've got an enemy that we're going to shoot with an arrow who is shooting arrows at us. Worth mentioning, by the way, there are two enemies, one right here and one right here who are lying in wait to ambush you. So be aware of them. Uh, we're going to knock this down so that we can grab this later. Now, when you walk into here, there's going to be a bunch of these uh, enemies that uh, are these kind of fat blob things. I rec recommend walking over here, and this will keep you safe, especially if the guy who's shooting uh, fire magic at you decides to come around the corner. You'll basically keep hitting this. But otherwise, uh, nail all of these enemies from here. And then for the last one, I recommend locking on to him. Wait for him to attack and then launch an arrow. And he's dead. If you don't have a lot of arrows, you can come out here, by the way, and cut this rope here. Otherwise, we're going to go back in. There's an enemy over here. So we're going to want to make this jump to get that item over there. Ignore this ladder for a moment, and we're going to go ahead and head down here. And this is an egg vermifuge. I mentioned the uh, concept of becoming an egghead in a previous episode. Uh, there's a guy named Anigi who is near the daughter of Chaos Bonfire. He's the, um, what do you call it, the servant or attendant, whatever you want to call it, to the... Uh, uh, daughter of Chaos, that's the um, uh, sister of Quelag, sister of Quelana. Anyway, um, he basically, if you become infected by the uh, by the egg uh, people, the people who have eggs on their backs, you'll actually become an egghead over time. And uh, that will actually heal you. That being said, if you get infected, don't just use the item because you can actually benefit from it by uh, having the uh, Anigi guy actually teach you pyromancies, and he'll only teach you the pyromancies once you become infected. So uh, that's actually got a benefit to it. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and head back, and we're going to head down this ladder. There's an enemy here lying in wait for us. I'm going to go ahead and knock him down. And we're going to head down. Got some more rats to deal with. And then here we have the painted gear, painted guardian gear. Uh, this, by the way, is a drop down point from several places. So um, you'll be coming back here more than once. For now, though, we're just going to go ahead and head back up. And you'll notice that there are is, there is still the sound being made of, uh, of rats. That's because we're not done with this section of this area yet. Okay, so we're going to head left, drop down here. Um, over here, we have another enemy who is coming to us and a soul item. So if we make a right here, um, note that there's going to be an item right there. We'll be coming back for that later. For now, just drop down. I'm going to grab a soul item. And here is that drop. I don't recommend making the full drop. Drop right here. That'll avoid you taking damage. And then drop down here. So rinse and repeat.
So we're gonna come in here and uh, head all the way down. And we're coming here first because I want to get you guys the uh, back to the bonfire. So head through here. Uh, you might recognize this boss, by the way, uh, from the what do you call it? Um, from Demon Souls. He's not a boss in this game, but he was a boss, the Phalanx Demon, and Demon Souls. Anyway, just move past him. We'll deal with him here in a bit. And then here you have your bonfire. So before we head back, we're going to go ahead and kill this enemy. They do provide a lot of souls, by the way. So this is a good enemy to farm if you need souls at this phase of the game. They're pretty easy and they're pretty close to a bonfire, so... That's a big positive. Okay. So we're going to come back uh, here a little later for all the items. For now, we're going to go ahead and head back to where we were. So we're going to head back upstairs. So that is another one of these undead drakes in front of us. We're going to uh, grab the items. You can also just avoid them for now. But I'm going to go ahead and grab them. If you're not fast about this, by the way, uh, if he runs into you, you will die. So be aware of that. So he's going to park himself right here, and he's going to start spitting um, this uh, poison stuff at you, just like the other one did. He'll occasionally try to bite the uh, area. Not that difficult to dodge, though. So he's dead. We do have Toxic on us though, so I'm going to use this opportunity to use a Blooming Purple Moss Clump. So you can pretty easily avoid that at this at this phase. I was just impatient. So we're going to get the Dragon Scale, uh, grab the items that are on the bridge if you need to. And I'm going to show you a quick way to get out of this place if you are here and you're like, oh my god, I shouldn't have come here. So jump attack this, this is actually a glitch. And then what you can do is you can drop down there. Now, you, anyway, you may be thinking, but MP Hater, that drop's gonna kill me. Well, if you actually drop off onto that thing below you, uh, it's actually taller than uh, than it seems and uh, you actually will, will live. So you can basically take a trek all the way down this path. Uh, there are a couple of undead enemies on the way, nothing too crazy there, but there is a really big beefy guy with a sword and a shield. He's basically the same kind of guy that we met in the uh, cathedral uh, next to um, Andre's bonfire. If you, can buy, uh, if you can bypass him, though, you can just simply run for the end. Uh, when you enter the boss gate, you actually don't have to fight the boss. Um, she's not going to be um, at all uh, hostile to you until you attack her. So just uh, run towards the edge and that will allow you to return. In our case though, we're going to go ahead and head back. So we're going to cl collect all the items as well as open the proper gate to actually access her. So this time around I'm going to go ahead and head back up. And then we're going to go upstairs. We got more of these flying things to deal with. By the way, these guys have a chance to drop uh, souvenirs of reprisal, which are the item for the D Dark Moon Covenant. So if you're uh, trying to farm items for that, you can do that. Oh, he got himself killed. Oops. Anyway, we're going to keep going up. 
Got another one to deal with. <laughs> ah, so many of these enemies just kill themselves. Man. So we got a red sign soapstone. The red sign soapstone is basically a uh, item to initiate a duel with someone. So you can leave a sign and initiate a duel with someone who uh, wants to duel you. Otherwise, though, we're going to go ahead and drop off here uh, to grab this item. And then we're going to drop down here. Now, you may see that item right there, and you may think, I can get that. No, you can't. Uh, in fact, they're kind of baiting you to drop down on there because uh, this is actually a death drop off of the ledge over there. So uh, I do not recommend uh, making that because you'll probably not be able to get off of here without uh, without dying. So uh, we'll come back to get that here in a few minutes. Um, for now, we're going to go ahead and go all the way back here. And we're going to head out, head down. And go outside. This door, by the way, is the proper door to the boss. For now, though, we're going to head here. Because we'll have to open up that door. So out here, make a right. And to the right of the... Um, immediate right, I should say. Of the staircase. We've got a soul item here. Keep going to the right. We have a humanity. We have a staircase, and at the end of this staircase is a Ring of Sacrifice. So, uh, note here that we got a, um, what do you call it, a, a well to go into. We'll be accessing that here in a bit. For now, though, uh, we're going to head out here. Uh, if you... Uh, come out here and you are human, the, you will be invaded. Uh, so we're going to be invaded by a NPC named Jeremiah. So I'm going to go ahead and nail all these enemies, some already human, and then get that invasion to happen so we can get some extra items. So come over here for a large soul item. And once you reach the edge of this area, uh, it will begin to spawn Jeremiah. So this is an egghead, by the way. He has fire. Easiest thing to do is just to stab him. You want to stab him before he uses the really big um, firestorm attack, which does a lot of damage. Anyway, you're going to get some Estus Flasks from him, and then he also will drop the Notched Whip. So this is his gear. Finally, we're going to go ahead and head out here, and we have a Pyromancy around the corner here. So Acid Surge. So you can head back to the bonfire if you want. I have plenty of Estus Flasks, though. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is head up the staircase. And we got a couple of uh, items to grab. Uh, this is going to be, by the way, a... Um, what do you call it? An ambush. So be aware of that. A soul item here to grab. If you did not, by the way, uh, have the arrows to knock this down, here's where you can knock it down with your sword. That's the humanity item we got earlier. So next we're going to go ahead and head down here. And this is going to go down into the area that the well is. So we're actually going to make a complete loop uh, around this area. But if you want to go about back to the well, you can do that too. So uh, go down here. And there are a bunch of bone wheels here, so I'm going to basically deal with all of those first. Then I will get all of the items that are here. 
So at this phase, other than just being irritating, they should not be that damaging to you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of soul items. One here, one back here. This is going to open up the actual gate that goes to the boss. And then behind this, there is a secret path here. You can either bash it or roll through it. Now, the way I like to do this is I like to basically uh, hug the left wall and basically make a complete circle. That way I go through every single room here. So I'm going to make a left here. Got a bone wheel, keep going, got a dead end, turn around, keep hugging the left wall. Now we are back to the um, bottom of the well. So now I'm going to go out, keep hugging the left wall, keep hugging the left wall. We got another bone wheel. So we're going to head up here. This has an enemy who will drop a pyromancy. So just nail him with an arrow. Or really good pyromancy, in fact. So head back down. Keep hugging the left wall. And we have an opening here. Along with another bone wheel enemy. Now we got the annex key, which opens up the last section of this area. And then now we're back where we started. So head back towards the bonfire, or not bonfire, torch. And then we're gonna go ahead and climb up. So those are all the items that are down here. Uh, we've also opened up the uh, path to the annex building. So the annex building is over here. So we're going to head upstairs. I'm going to nail this enemy from afar. Then we're going to make a left. Usually there's a fire guy here. Go ahead and uh, try to nail him. And then we got some of these um, winged things, whatever they're called. So got a miracle. Uh, the next thing I'm going to recommend that you do is uh, nail the enemies that are out here with your arrows. Yeah, once they get closer, you'll do more damage to them. So if you don't get right up on the edge when you're doing this, uh, you can basically nail him without actually taking these hits. And he's dead. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and head down here. Avoid this pit, by the way. And this is that item that I pointed out earlier. So make a left. Grab the uh, black cleric gear. 
You might recognize this area. We were uh, here earlier. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and head back because we're not quite done yet getting all the items. So head down here, make a left. Don't get, don't go into there yet. I don't recommend because uh, we're going to be going, coming back to that area here in a moment. So go ahead and grab the dark ember. So this allows us to uh, deal with uh, darkness weapons, occult weapons. Next, we're going to knock this in, and then this is Velka's rapier. Go ahead and drop down here. Uh, be aware there are some rats down here, so quite a few in fact. So kill them. Not one of them gave me humanity. Ah. Anyway, we're going to jump this. There's an item behind there. So I got a gold coin. And then we're going to head up the ladder. So you should recognize this area. Uh, this is the same place we dropped off on earlier. So drop down here and we're gonna go ahead and head back up this ladder. So now we've gotten all the items in this area. We're gonna go ahead and head towards the boss now. So when you come in here, make a left. Drop down, same as before. So that leads to the boss. I'm going to go ahead and go deposit my souls. Get a couple of levels. And I'm really close to having enough souls for a level up. Let's see. Not quite enough. That'll do it. Cool, now we're up to 70. Getting closer to that 30. So yeah, if you want to kill this guy each time you come through here, that's fine. I'll go ahead and kill him myself. Always I'm happy to collect souls. Then we're going to head towards the boss. This boss, by the way, should be pretty easy for you at this stage. But again, we do have some gear that will make it even easier if you are having some struggles with it. Honestly, it's getting to the boss that's, in my opinion, maybe a little more dangerous. So we got some enemies here shooting some arrows. Off to the right, there is an enemy kind of hiding. Uh, there are some enemies to the right who are, and left, in fact, who are trying to ambush you. We're going to knock them down. Okay. 
So now we got this guy to deal with. Uh, this guy is really the only, I would say, semi-big challenge because you're on a really narrow stretch. What I recommend doing is basically try to bait that attack out of him, back off and do an attack. Otherwise, you can also get behind him. Just don't get greedy. That is what I can what I can say. So he is guaranteed, by the way, to drop a large Titanite shard. He may also drop his sword. So now we're going to head to the boss battle. So as you walk in, uh, this is Priscilla. She is not actually going to attack you unless you attack her first. So let's talk about um, what we're going to do against her. So I'm going to recommend that you equip the Blood Shield. So the Blood Shield is going to uh, give you various resistances, as it says. But probably the big thing that we're going to use it for, of course, is the uh, blood uh, Bleed Resistance. We're also going to also, uh, also equip the Blood Bite Ring for this too. I'm going to recommend that you have the Charcoal Pine Resin equipped. And that should be fine. If you want to, you could probably equip the uh, Bloodred Moss Clumps, but I don't think you're going to need it. So um, be aware as you equip this gear, you are going to get uh, some bleed. You can wait for it to go down if you want. I'm not too worried about it, however. Uh, that being said, though, we do want to get her weapon, her tail weapon. So, uh, as you can see, her tail is dangling there. I recommend basically a straight up and down cut. Don't lock on to her when you're doing this. And this should be a pretty easy tail weapon to get. That being said, once we initiate combat with her, she is going to become invisible. And that will become very, very difficult for us to cut off her tail. Mainly because she just doesn't have a whole lot of health. And um, we'll probably end up killing her before she becomes uh, visible again. So I'm going to go ahead and do a jump attack. Which we, w we want this. This is a pretty good weapon in my opinion. So the only way that you're going to be able to tell where she is, is basically the footprints in the snow. So see how much that's uh, work that's doing? If you hit her fast enough, uh, it will trigger her to uh, no longer be uh, invisible. And that's it. So now we got her soul, which uh, we can actually use to make the Life Hunt Scythe, which is a really nice weapon. Um, Twin Humanities as well. Now, normally there is some gear here. Um, if you don't see gear here, we're actually going to want to quit the game. And continue. Uh, this is basically going to cause the Xanthius uh, gear to drop. And this is uh, the gear that was from the NPC that we fought. So uh, this can be kind of useful in some cases. Anyway, make sure you grab that because uh, that can be useful, especially when it comes to its uh, resistance to curse. So that's something that's kind of nice. It also has uh, magic defense, not much fire d uh, defense or lightning defense though, so Still, your main gear is going to be, especially the Ornstein gear if you got it, is going to be your best uh, best friend at this point. Otherwise, though, go ahead and walk off here. Now, be aware when you, whenever you come back to the Painted World, or paint, paint back from the Painted World, all of the Guardians uh, will have respawned. Uh, you can either kill them or you can run, but be aware that they often will try to backstab you, and they're pretty fast. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you just kill them. Any of them that attack you, I should say. Hey, we got the sword. Oh, that one's coming to us. Oh, that one is too. Coming to your deaths. being chased. Yes, we are. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and head back down to the bonfire. grab a level and that I think is going to wrap out this episode so uh, we are at 47 minutes and uh, in the next episode we're going to be going on a few different uh, treks we're going to uh, become a member of the Dark Moon Covenant we're also going to kill Gwendolyn so we're going to immediately become banned from the Dark Moon Covenant um, I'm also probably going to uh, head over to Sen's Fortress and kill the last two of the Titanite night demons, I guess. Um, I'm trying to figure out what we can fill the episode with, just because um, Gwendolyn is a pretty fast boss battle. In fact, we're right in front of the boss battle right now. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in the next episode. So either way, thank you everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.